Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Tuesday, August 4th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So we're gonna look a little bit into what Governor Mike DeWine talked about in his press conference today. Uh, there was a new order issued about schools, and we touched a little bit on sports, plus I want to give you a bit of information about Ohio's special election that's happening today. So. Before we dive too deep into anything, let me give you an update on some of the new coronavirus data. So today there are 1,143 new cases of coronavirus in the state, which is short of the 21 day average of 1,291. Coronavirus related deaths are up though, unfortunately in the last 24 hours, there were 31 deaths reported, which is higher than the 21 day average of 24. Both hospitalizations and ICU admissions are up as well, with 127 and 23 respectively. The 21-day average for those metrics are 99 and 18. And while we're at it, let's just dive into what was discussed today at that conference. DeWine put together a list of all 88 counties, ranking them in order of those with the most cases per 100,000 people to the least. Unfortunately, Lucas County came in at number two, which is not great news, but um, Wyandotte was just behind at third, and three other local counties, Hancock, Ottawa, and Wood, were all in the top 10. But one of the biggest takeaways from today was a new order regarding schools. DeWine is now requiring that students returning to school, K through 12, uh, must be wearing a mask or other face covering. So this move comes after DeWine received joint guidance from the Ohio Children's Hospital Association and the American Academy of Pediatrics. So of course, there are a number of exemptions as always. So let me go through those real quick. So those ex exemptions include children under two, a child unable to remove the covering without assistance, children with significant behavioral or psychological issues who are undergoing treatment that's exacerbated specifically by the use of a face covering, so think severe anxiety or tactile aversion, children living with severe autism or severe developmental delay who may become agitated or anxious while wearing a mask, and any child with a facial deformity that causes airway obstruction. And since we're already talking about schools, here's a small update on the school sports situation. On Tuesday, the Ohio High School Athletic Association announced it has accepted a proposal from staff members that would let schools seek rights fees from local media outlets or production companies to provide live video of their home regular season Friday night football games. So before, the host school is only able to air live broadcasts of those games on school-owned TV stations or on the school-owned website. Um, other media was only able to air Friday games on a delay. Schools are currently able to do this for all, all other regular season sports, as well as non-Friday regular season football games. So this adjustment would really only impact Friday night football. Schools have been increasingly interested in partnering with third parties to generate revenue from rights fees and pay-per-view Friday night football broadcasts to make up for those attendance restrictions that have been put in place due to the pandemic, which we all know has received some pushback. But Lieutenant Governor John Houston did say today that his team is working with OHSAA to finalize plans going forward and that they're still considering options that accommodate both health and practical considerations for athletes, coaches, and fans. So stay tuned for that. And for the most part, a lot of the focus on some of these guidelines has been on high school sports, but this order has an impact on college and even professional sports as well. So according to that health department order, spectators aren't allowed to, aren't allowed to attend contact sport com, uh, competitive interclub slash team play. So on Monday, the Department of Health confirmed with our sister station WKYC in Cleveland that the ruling does apply to all levels of sports, including collegiate and professional, meaning as it stands currently, fans won't be able to go to OSU or Brown's home games. Bummer. Now I went through these yesterday, but as a reminder, the Ohio Department of Health considers the following activities as contact sports. So that's football, basketball, rugby, field hockey, soccer, lacrosse, wrestling, hockey, boxing, futsal, and martial arts with opponents. So this was all addressed at DeWine's press conference this afternoon as well. Houston said that they have had phone calls with both the Bengals and the Browns and received plans for a turn to play, but they're still reviewing plans in terms of how it affects safely accommodating fans. So 
Here's a bit of fun sports news for you, though. The Cleveland Indians are giving you a chance to have your face at Progressive Field by selling fan cutouts that will make appearances in the stands at home games, which is something I never thought I would see. Uh, but cutouts cost Cutouts cost 100 bucks each, and money goes towards Cleveland Indians charities. The option comes during the MLB restart amid this whole pandemic, which stopped the season for months. Cutouts will be placed in time for the big game against the Tigers on August 21st and will stay through the rest of the season. But let's switch gears here and focus a bit more locally. So you know that Toledo City Council vote I told you about yesterday where they approved to add two new tax issues to the November ballot. Well, they are going to have to vote to approve those additions once again. Uh, suspended council member Larry Sykes showed up and did vote at Monday's meeting as he had yet to receive official word that he had, in fact, been suspended. Um, however, all four city council members accused in a bribes for vote scheme were officially voluntarily suspended from the job as of Friday, so he wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, council initially decided to simply just strike his votes from the record, but uh, today, Council President Matt Cherry said they would hold another vote as a safety net. The vote would let voters decide in November if they want to extend the current three-fourths percent municipal income tax going toward police, fire, and other areas of the safety department for that to continue through December 31st, 2024. And if they want to add another quarter percent municipal income tax to go toward road repair. Um, and that would also last until December 31st, 2024. So I'll keep you posted on the results of this second vote whenever that happens. And speaking of voting, great segue there. Today is Ohio's special election. There are only two local counties with issues on the ballot, which include Wood and Hancock. So Bowling Green schools are on the ballot in Wood County with eight referendums to transfer territory between school districts in Hancock. Finley schools are looking for voter support for a tax to help operating expenses. So if you live in these counties and you need to know where to cast your vote, we have all of that information right now on our website, WTOL.com. So go check that out quick. There isn't too much time left, but that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, you can always comment below. I'll be checking them, or you can send us a text message at any time at 419-248-1100. We have people checking that always, trying to get you verified information. And check back here tomorrow at around 4.35 or so. I'll be giving you all new headlines, so stay tuned with that. And thank you so much for watching, and have a great Tuesday.